not too good. Study done in a college many, many years ago where they took healthy, you know, 18, 19, 20 year olds and they deprived them of sleep. What did they end up with? Pain. Pain. And what did they call it? Fibromyalgia. Most doctors who don't know how to treat these things call it fibromyalgia, which is an untreatable syndrome. Doesn't mean a damn thing, excuse me. Get those neurotransmitters cranking, you know, proper nutrition again, proper supplements, proper hormones. Things come back together. Low serotonin. Serotonin is the feel-good hormone. It's why we like chocolate, right? How many people like chocolate? Whole room. <laughs> Except my wife. <clears throat> oh, she raised a little bit. Uh, so how do we raise the serotonin? What do people take for sleep? Melatonin, 5-HTP, things like that. They crank up the serotonin. When you have good serotonin levels, you sleep better. When you sleep better, you have good serotonin levels. Vicious cycle, right? We need a lot of protein in order to get that. Excessive stress can block it also. How many, pe how many people in this room are not stressed? I'm not raising my hand. We got one guy who's not stressed. And you know what, I've, I've talked to this gentleman, and he's been like this his whole life. <laughs> right? right? But most of us are pretty stressed out in this environment we live in. Now, you're from Hawaii, and when you're there, you're probably not that stressed. And when you're here, you're probably a lot more stressed. GABA. GABA is a receptor site that GABA attaches to and relaxes us. It's in Valium, it's in all those... Uh, benzodiazepines. We can actually change our nutrition to gain more GABA. We can actually tape GABA. There's a product we use called Stress Arrest. It's basically GABA. When people take that, they relax. It's great for sleep. It's great during the day if you're stressed. Another area that's very important is acid alkaline balance in the nutrition. All right? What does that mean? Anyone here take chemistry when they were young? One guy? Remember litmus paper? We use litmus paper. You pee on it. Don't put it in your mouth because when you eat food, it distracts what's going on. But get it, let it go through your system. Check your urine. Check it several times a day. Watch what you eat, then check your urine. And you'll know what foods make you acidic or make you alkaline. Now, what does acid do to things? It burns it, doesn't it? Right? You've heard of getting acid thrown on your face when your mafia doesn't like you. Same thing in the body. Red meat. Highly acidic. Remember I talked about arachidonic acid? It burns. It hurts. It makes joints hurt. It makes us feel bad. Raises inflammation. Causes, maybe, heart disease. Too much protein? Yeah, that can do it if it's the wrong proteins. Too much grain? Same thing. Very acidic. Sodas. How many people love sodas here? Good. Phosph phosphoric acid is in soda. What does it do? It leaches away your bones. I'd love to do a bone density on you people that are drinking it because you're going to be losing bone just from that. Uh, but it also acidifies your, your blood and therefore actually eats bones up because it's acidic. When you have an acidic system, you're going to lose bone. Now, I have people almost every day in my office, guys, that I check their bones, and they go, how could I have osteopenia or osteoporosis? I'm a guy. That's for women, right? No. No, I find it equally well distributed between men and women. So we're all losing bone unless we keep our hormones up and eat decently. Okay. How much vitamin D do we have? Very little in our system. We're not working outdoors in a bathing suit. That's what it takes to get about 15,000 units of vitamin D. I typically am giving about 10,000 units to all my patients a day. They all go, isn't that too much? My doctor said I should have you know, the RDA, 200 micrograms or something. No, you need a lot of vitamin D to keep your bones going. Calcium, magnesium, potassium, these are all structures that can actually help alkalinize your body. Now, on the little strips that we use, the little rolls of litmus paper, you pee on it, if it turns green, you're alkaline, great. Alkaline systems, less cancer. Acidic systems, more cancer. Not enough vegetables. Vegetables, great for alkalinization especially the green ones. Low body stores of magnesium. Magnesium is a relaxing type of a compound, right? We take Epsom salt baths. I push it on everybody who walks into my office because everybody's got sleep problems. Take a hot bath till you sweat. 
stick Epsom salt in, which is magnesium, you're going to relax. It relaxes everything. It's also great when you have flus and colds coming on to help get the toxins out of the system. So we find this also, there are these receptors in the brain called NMDA, and they are wrecking havoc and causing pain. So we help quiet them down with enough magnesium. Also found in green vegetables and fruits. How many people think they eat enough of those? Hey, we got one. Over-the-counter magnesium supplements can cause diarrhea, right? Anyone ever take a lot of magnesium, get diarrhea? It actually says in Epsom salt you can take this when you're constipated. It's magnesium. What does it do? It relaxes the gut so everything just flies through. So you have to be careful. I had a woman come in who was um, very wealthy and the manager of a very famous singer, and she'd been to doctors all over the world, spent hundreds of thousands of dollars because she had chronic diarrhea. She walked in the office. I said, let me see your list of supplements. Guess how many of them had magnesium in them? <coughs> I think there were five or six. Plus, she took so many supplements that no one could absorb this. And I said, can you please just try not taking your supplements for two days and let me know what happens? She goes, no, I have to take them. That's how I stay healthy. And I said, well, it might get rid of your diarrhea. <laughs> she goes, OK, I'll try it. Call me back in two days and said, no more diarrhea. Now, she had some of the strongest antibiotics from famous gastroenterologists, one called Alinean. Everyone take Alinean here? It's a killer. It makes you sick. She took that. She took a lot of different things. She got scoped up and down. Nothing worked because too much supplements. Can we take too much supplements? Yeah. Everybody's different. Those of us that take supplements don't take too much in the morning. Wait till your stomach fills up. You know, dinner is a great time. I spread mine out most. I take a few in the morning. Then I spread them out between lunch and dinner. I have no problems with that. When I didn't know about that, before I was not that smart, I would take them in the morning and guess where I was by the time I got to my office. I was in the bathroom, wasting my money on the supplements. Lack of sleep. <clears throat> what happens if we don't sleep well? You know, weightlifters will actually take GHB before they go to sleep. Anyone know what that is? The date rape drug, right? Why do they do it? They get a really deep delta sleep. And the first couple hours of sleep is when you get the most growth hormone. Anyone here take growth hormone? Not one. OK. Um, you know, to build up really big, they need high doses of testosterone and growth hormone. And those of them that can't afford it, you know, GHB used to cost 20 bucks for a big bottle at the health food store until Big Pharma made it a drug that was regulated. Now it costs $500 for a month's worth for people just to sleep. Is it a bad drug? No. Can it be used bad? Yeah, anything could be. What happens with poor sleep? Inadequate tissue repair, dysregulation of many hormones. We don't rebuild if we're not sleeping well. Dysregulation of many neurotransmitters. Okay, So it's a slippery slope down if you're not sleeping. Sleep is one of the things we have to hit the hardest with anybody with any kind of a syndrome to make them feel good. How many people don't sleep well in here? I'm, I'm raising my hand. Okay. Yeah. But it's things that sleep is one of those things that most people we can get them a lot better if not perfect with. Or what's the food pyramid? I'm going to show you what they look like. They are antiquated and they certainly don't work very well for us because they're very bottom heavy in grains, cereal, and fruits. Okay. Which what do they do? They promote obesity and inflammation. So we want to follow the old food chain? No way. This is it. So what do we have at the bottom? Bread, cereal, rice, pasta. Six to 11 servings a day. What happens to people when they're like that? Yeah, you got it. Then what's next? Fruit, two to four servings a day. That just adds to it. Here we get the good stuff, you know, but use that last and sparingly, right? <coughs> now this is the truth. This is the nutrition plan you just saw this is what the government wants you to look like, too. Now, one of the weirdest things I have in my office is I have people come in pretty hefty, and in three months they're coming back, and I'm checking them out. I know what they did in the three months because I have their blood labs I redid. They don't have to sh I don't have to see them. I know how big their body is. I know what they look like. And as they're walking around, I go, you weren't doing it. Or I'll go, you did a great job. And they go, how do you know? And I go, because your blood shows it. I'm like a car mechanic. You guys are all like high-tuned high Ferraris, right? Or not so 